it's Hailey Reese and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited that you are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic spooky season thus far. Today's video is one that we have to dive into because I feel like it is not 31 days of Halloween unless we cover a haunted doll and this case is absolutely chilling. This case goes beyond somebody who stumbled upon or was gifted a haunted doll and roots much deeper. So I'm very interested to hear what you guys think of this case and your opinions on haunted dolls. Today we're going to be covering the dark case of Smiley the Haunted Doll. Now I think Smiley the Haunted Doll as a name in and of itself can send shivers up your spine, but what this doll was capable of is absolutely chilling. In 2018, Deanna Baldick was incredibly worried about her daughter, Peyton. Peyton had grown incredibly reclusive. She wasn't hanging out with the neighborhood kids as much. In fact, the only person or thing that Peyton wanted to hang out with was her invisible friend. Now, what was interesting about this invisible friend was Peyton would never answer any questions as to what her name was or who she was. All she would tell her mom was that she was her best friend. When her mom would ask Peyton why she wouldn't want to hang out with the other kids or even her cousins or join in on family activities, she would just simply say that she wanted to hang out with her friend, which of course was her invisible friend. The two of them would hang out in Peyton's room all day every day. When Peyton would go outside, she would be seen playing with what others couldn't see and it was becoming this bond that seriously concerned Deanna. Deanna was starting to worry about the development of Peyton. She said that when Peyton was a little, little girl, she was very social. She enjoyed hanging out with her cousins. She enjoyed hanging out with the neighborhood kids and even her parents. But it was as soon as she met this invisible friend, Peyton changed. Now, Deanna actually sought help from a counselor or a therapist in this situation because she was kind of at her wit's end. She didn't want to upset her daughter, but she felt as though there was not much more she could do. So one day she goes into her therapist and decides to sit down and have a conversation about Peyton, her development, and this invisible friend. Now the therapist began telling Deanna that it wasn't unusual for a child of Peyton's age to have an invisible friend and that perhaps it's part of her imagination and that she shouldn't be concerned about her imagination expanding. But Deanna tried to explain to her that she felt as though this was an unhealthy invisible friend, that she too had had invisible friends when she was a child, but watching Peyton was very different. She began to explain to the therapist that when Peyton would play with her invisible friend, it wasn't like she'd seen other kids play with their invisible friends. It was like Peyton was waiting for actual responses. There was a response wait time. And it was as though she was reacting whether she liked her invisible friend's answer or not, organically and authentically. At this point, the therapist, still thinking that this was just a child with a mild imagination, suggested that perhaps if Deanna was worried, why not try to bring Peyton out and introduce her to other things? She even suggested maybe not introducing her out into, you know, playing with other kids right away. Why doesn't she go and get her a new toy or something else to distract her from this invisible friend? So that night, Deanna went home and laid in bed thinking about what she could do to give Peyton something that would distract her from this invisible friend and hopefully start pulling her out into reality, as she called it. The next morning, Deanna had stumbled upon what she thought was the best idea, and that was to take Peyton to the toy store and have her pick out whatever toy she wanted that sparked her interest that was not to do with said invisible friend. Now at first, Peyton was very reluctant. She said that her friend didn't like that idea, that they didn't need toys, that they didn't want to hang out with toys, and she went upstairs. But a couple of hours later, Peyton would return back downstairs to tell her mom that the two of them talked it over and they would like a doll. Deanna was overjoyed that Peyton even wanted anything outside of this, even though it was a decision made by the two of them, and so they got ready, ate their lunch, and headed off to the toy store to pick out the perfect doll for Peyton. Now Deanna says that she was really, really hopeful that this doll would distract her from her invisible friend, and that maybe she could start hanging out with this doll instead of hanging out with what wasn't physically there. They arrive at the toy store and they start going up and down the aisle and what Deanna noticed right away was that Peyton was conversing with said invisible friend over which doll would be the most perfect. 
Deanna wasn't totally pleased that this was still involving the invisible friend, but was trusting the process and just kind of went along with it and allowed her and her invisible friend to pick out the perfect doll to bring home to the house. They settled upon this big, not life-sized doll, but definitely a medium-sized doll. It wasn't a small-sized doll that had a very interesting, wide, giant smile to it. Peyton grabbed the doll immediately and said that the both of them loved it. This was Smiley the doll. Now, Deanna never had named any of her dolls something of the sorts, but she thought it was fitting because the doll did have a giant smile on it. And while the doll didn't really sit right in looks-wise to Deanna, this was for Peyton. This was to get Peyton out of her shell. And so she bought Smiley the doll. Smiley the doll returns home that evening with Peyton and her invisible friend, and the three of them go upstairs, as Peyton said, to go and play with this new doll. Now at first, Deanna thought that something had really been done here. She would see Peyton playing with this doll all the time. Although at times she would include her invisible friend in the play, she was just so happy that Peyton was growing an attachment and playing with something else. Now eventually, Deanna thought that what she had done actually worked because suddenly her daughter was no longer talking to this invisible friend. She was talking to her doll. And all day, every day, she would play with this doll, talk to this doll, and hang out with this doll. Now, Deanna did notice that she was having the same like response time with the doll that she had had with the invisible friend, but this felt more natural to her because when she was a child, she'd also played with dolls and played like mommy with them and would talk to them and kind of like, is it role play with them? I don't know. Play pretend with them, that's what it is. Oh my God, we'll play with your dolls. Anyways, um, she will play pretend with her dolls as well. So it didn't strike her as unnerving. It was more so, okay, we're making progress here. But eventually the attachment to this doll became very strange and strange things started to happen. When bad things would happen around the house, like something broke or something was spilt, Peyton started to blame the doll. She would say that it was Smiley the doll that was doing it. Deanna didn't like this because she felt it was a form of deflection from Peyton's poor behavior, and this made her feel as though her development was again in question. She started to sit down with Peyton and ask her, like, well, you know, Smiley the doll is just a doll. Smiley the doll can't do these things, and you're the only other little girl in this house. Peyton seemed to not buy it, but didn't say anything about it at first. Things just kind of continued progressing and progressing and progressing. And again, this attachment to this doll got very strange and bad things started happening that were being blamed on the doll. At this point, Deanna said that she felt as though she just wanted her to play with that invisible friend again, because even though it was strange and it seemed very isolating, she wasn't misbehaving or acting in the way that she was now currently. She had noticed that Peyton's behavior had kind of went backwards, she had a little bit more of an attitude, she was getting angry easier, and she would blame these emotions and these feelings on Smiley the doll. So one day after dinner, Deanna decides to approach Peyton and ask her where her invisible friend is, hoping that maybe there could be a healthy balance between all of it. And that was when Peyton looked at her mother in the eyes and said, right here, pointing to Smiley the doll whom was sitting in the chair next to Peyton. Deanna looks at her and says, what are you talking about, Peyton? That's Smiley the doll. To which Peyton replies, yeah, she's inside Smiley the doll. She is Smiley the doll. Now, Deanna said that she never believed in anything of the sort. She didn't believe in haunted dolls. She didn't believe in spirits, hence why the idea of an invisible friend being her whole world and having these types of conversations with was so concerning to her. She felt as though it was an overactive imagination that could be at times unhealthy. So she couldn't comprehend the idea that perhaps there truly was something inside of Smiley the doll. At this point, Peyton gets up from dinner and takes Smiley the doll with her and Deanna's up all night tossing and turning, wondering what she meant by she's inside the doll. The next day after school, she sits Peyton down and wants to question her as to what was going on with Smiley the doll and said invisible friend. Peyton proceeds to tell her that they had chosen the doll because her friend wanted to be something more physical and that she had asked her if she could please go inside of her new doll, to which Peyton replied, yes. She said that she's inside of the doll and that she's very much there. 
Deanna admits that at this point she lost her temper and she started telling Peyton that she needs to stop with this, stop with the antics, this isn't funny. She understands that there's imaginations but she's taking it too far and all Peyton replies to her is, you're making Smiley very, very mad at you. Now Deanna thinks this is silly and says, Smiley's just a stupid doll, Peyton. Stop it. Like, stop this, stop this behavior. And Peyton looks at her and says, she says you're going to regret that. Deanna's frustrated at this point and sends Peyton up to her room, to which she takes Smiley the doll with her, and the two of them head upstairs. And at this point, Deanna is at a loss for words. She has no idea who she's looking at with her daughter. She's confused and even more concerned that her daughter's now saying that her invisible friend is inside Smiley the doll, and something is very off about it. The following day, Peyton goes to school, and Deanna gets this weird, weird feeling that she's being watched while she's within the house. All of a sudden, as she's walking past the hallway towards Peyton's room, the cross on the wall goes flying off of the wall. Now, Deanna, again, she was religious, but not spiritual in the sense of like ghosts and paranormal activity. She didn't think that it could be anything other than it falling off the wall. But as she went to turn around, she said she got this horrible sensation right behind her head. She started hearing what sounded like giggling from Peyton's room. So she turned around and went to go in the room to see. And there, sat up on Peyton's bed, where Peyton left her, was Smiley the doll. Except this time, Smiley's smile had completely changed. It went from kind of a weird smile, but still a happy smile, to this sinister looking smile, to the point where Deanna thought she was going absolutely crazy. She couldn't comprehend if she'd make this up in her head, whether the smile was always like this, but she was certain that the smile had been different prior with Smiley the doll. Now, unfortunately, they hadn't taken any photos of Smiley the doll prior, so it didn't really make any sense to her as to why the smile would have shifted. But she said when she looked into the smile of Smiley the doll, this new smile, it felt threatening towards her and she felt really, really uncomfortable. She ended up leaving the room, closing the door and actually leaving for the day until she went and got Peyton from school and brought her back home. Now, Deanna starts asking Peyton about Smiley's smile. She's like, did you notice anything about Smiley the doll's smile that's any bit different? To which Peyton replied, I told you she wasn't happy with you. At this point, Deanna is starting to get creeped out because while her daughter's been saying crazy things all along, at the same time, she's also dealing with the fact that she's physically seen it change. Now, you guys, she ends up the following day while Peyton is at school, taking the doll and tossing it out into the garbage can for garbage day to be taken out in the trash. She ends up going to the store, purchasing a new Smiley the doll, which by the way, had a very different smell, the smell that she had remembered from before, and bringing this to Peyton's room and putting it up on Peyton's bed. Peyton was upset when she got home, knowing that it wasn't her Smiley, saying that that was wrong, where'd my friend go, you got rid of my friend, but Deanna was not having it. The following morning, she comes out with Smiley the doll, but yet again, Smiley the doll has the evil smile. When she goes up to Peyton's room while she's at school, she finds two Smiley the dolls, the one that she had purchased afterwards and the one that they had originally had that she had thrown out in the trash. Are you kidding me? All in all, they ended up having to contact somebody who helps with situations like this. Turns out there was a dark spirit that had attached to Peyton that had convinced Peyton to allow it to go inside of her doll and that the intentions were malicious. Now this person didn't know whether the doll would ever harm Peyton, but there was harm within this entity's will. And it was utilizing Peyton to do what it wanted to do here on Earth. Nonetheless, it seems as though they ended up getting rid of Smiley the doll, but to this day, there's been no update as to whether or not Peyton's okay, what's what transpired or conspired afterwards, and where Smiley the doll actually ended up. I don't know. Well, if I look completely different right now, it's because my charged camera just died on me. I don't know if it was Smiley or what, but anyways, we are back, we are charged. Um, but yeah, to this day, nobody knows what ended up happening. Basically, she said that she had somebody who specializes in cases like this take the doll that her daughter ended up understanding once she had some space away from whatever this entity was. They tried to ask her what she looked like, but what was interesting was Peyton said, 
it always changed forms. The only time it stayed one form was when it was smiley. Now what's really interesting about this is that demons require permission for entry, meaning that it could have very well been a demon in this sense, or at least a dark entity, of asking Peyton permission to enter this doll. I think what's even eerier is that Peyton and this entity chose the doll together. It was as if it was choosing its next vessel. But yeah, either way, that is the case of Smiley the doll. I find it chilling. It's one of the first cases I've heard, um, or one of the few cases I've heard, where it comes from a child's, you know, invisible friend and then moves into the child's toy. But nonetheless, Smiley the doll is out there somewhere, I'm sure. It's just a matter of where. Well, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I know that so many of you enjoy this haunted doll series. If there are any haunted dolls that you've yet to see me cover, sorry, can I speak? Um, definitely comment down below if there's any of them you would like to see me cover. I am absolutely super excited about that. And heads up, you may be seeing some crazy haunted doll content very, very shortly. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my content, I would absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness and until next time, I love you.